This is more about living in the time of the coronavirus epidemic. I watched a little of the virtual dummy crappic convention last night. The unmistakable theme was unity, even though they had a Republican governor speak along with Bernie Sanders. But they did everything together except sing Kumbaya. You don't have to try to make this funny. It's a comic presentation to the core. It's a fantasy camp, and they are all pretending together. They see the pander man as a godsend, an almost mythic figure who will lead, heal, solve problems, save souls. The person of the pander man has been wiped clean and cloaked in glory. He is the standard bearer, the figurehead, the anointed one. His very name acquires a magical ring. When you contrast all of that to the living man, you could wonder, who are they talking about? But fantasy is necessary in the process of democracy. Look at all the buildings in the state capitals and Washington. Pure fantasy. And when it comes to the politicians, they don't spin, they fabricate. They make it up and serve it piping hot. It's democracy. And I watched the last night of the virtual convention when the pander man would accept the nomination of his party. Except I missed that. I went to bed before he came on. But from what I did see, two things struck me. The first is that, years ago, one of these conventions was a sprawling, chaotic, hotly contested occasion with lots of gavel pounding for order, backroom dealing, and some suspense. That is all long gone, and especially in this version, the virtual convention because of the epidemic. Everything was scripted. It was all canned, one long commercial, and even though everyone was upbeat and enthusiastic, there wasn't a drop of real excitement. It was boring and predictable and was overanalyzed by news people who had nothing to do but blather because there was no news. The old conventions were a dynamic, if possibly underhanded, process. The new one was a big, slick, lifeless rubber stamp. More demo crazy. The second thing was that there were all these young people, a parade of them, citizens, politicians, entertainers, and they were all calling for a change. They wanted something new, something fresh, someone who could lead the nation and revitalize it, give us all some hope. And while all of this was compelling, it has to be seen against the fact that what they were getting was not a Kennedy or Clinton or an Obama, but an old worn out retread, a party hack, the pander man. His entire adult life was spent in office with nothing to show for it but self-enrichment. Exactly the opposite of what everyone was calling for. They had no choice to do but what but to do what they do so often. Ignore the reality of what is before them and pretend like mad that something that it is something else, what you desperately want, not what it is. Seeing all of those people do that so eagerly made me sad. So politics dominates, and will continue to do so, for in the coming week we will be retreated to the Republican National Convention, virtual style, and that will generate an apotheosis of the trumpet as the one who is here to save us. How he will bleat, how he will savor that. And I note this now because it isn't as if the virus has gone away. The field mouse is still whining, with his counties in color, and the numbers are still high, 
and when we go out, everyone is all masked up and trying to keep their distance, giving that awkward feel to the world, as if the air itself was fatally contaminated, and we are all trying to swim through it without loss of life. And the racial protests continue, although now they are fading, I think, and when they flare up again, it is because they were fading, and the protesters were not going to allow that to happen, not without some permanent changes. The sports continue, but I question the level of interest. Pro football is getting ready to begin its season, and there is interest there as to how that will play out. Similarly, high school football. It's like an experiment, and no one is sure what will happen. And I mean the games themselves, not the outcomes. So despite all the other activities, the virus is still the wild card in the deck. The joker, the potential game changer that could shut everything down. As long as there is no vaccine, calling Mr. Putin, the virus is going to continue to shape the way we live, virtually, and die. Nothing virtual there about death.